Trust and Research. Don't forget that newsletter every Sunday. And uh, good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning. Good. Okay. Hey, uh, uh, I just saw something on uh, CNBC that blew me away. They are saying, that reporting today, that four companies, four companies, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Alphabet, which is formerly Google, are 20% of all S&P earnings. Is that correct? Yep. Really? That, 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 that sounds imaginable. Uh, and, and they're all Internet stocks. Wow. Well, sort of. They're all technology stocks. Well, technology stock. Okay, there you go, yeah. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't call Apple, uh, you know, an Internet stock, but, yeah. Wow. Pretty amazing. It is amazing. I that, that, I just saw that. I'm going. Oh, oh my. Yeah. And it, especially especially since the big hit on three of those four companies for a very long time was that they didn't really produce earnings. They remember how they would always talk about revenues, revenues, revenues. Oh yeah, and yeah. They were giving everything away and, you know, so now you know, they've turned on the spigot. I shudder to think what's going to happen when Jeff Bezos decides that he's in enough businesses and that he um, not controls but dominates those businesses enough where he can just turn on the spigot and produce, you know, massive earnings. Wow. <laughs> That's... That's mind-boggling. Uh, that 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 just uh, it just blows me away. Well, you know there was that. Uh, yeah, if you want. Yep. Go ahead. Well, it, you know, the more important statistic, and I don't know what it is, but I know that it's huge, is the amount of the Nasdaq's gain that comes from those stocks. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you have to realize they're all high-priced stocks, so they're all more heavily weighted. Sure. And so, you know, if you look at the, not the NASDAQ comp per se, but the NASDAQ 100, the QQQs, I mean, those four stocks dominate that index. I mean, you know, when, when Apple was running um, a year and a half or two years ago when it had its, you know, pretty substantial run from 100 to 130 uh, when it made its new high. I mean, it was, my recollection was it was about 13% of the NASDAQ 100. And everybody was weighted that way. Everybody who was in or who was trying to mirror that index was 13% simply in Apple. So the numbers for those four are pretty substantial. Wow. And that, that, that just blows me away. Well, you know, uh, our old buddy, um, of course, uh, we were with uh, Mark Cuban and his uh, company, AudioNet, at the uh, very beginning of his company. And, uh, of course, he wound up selling it to uh, Yahoo and got out just in time. Uh, but Mark Cuban is now claiming that robots are going to cause a huge unemployment problem for the United States. And then Bill Gates, I love it, followed up by saying robots need to, robots. Pay, need to pay taxes like the rest of us. <laughs> it's like, okay. Um, <laughs> what do you think about that? That's a nine. <laughs> So you don't agree with Bill Gates? No. Nope. No. Nope. Not on that. Yeah. Are they going to enforce it? What are they going to do? Turn the power off? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you you have to declare all of your robots. I I have no clue. Have an IRS agent yeah. uh, uh, just uh, assigned to robots and drones. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Uh. So uh, that includes. <laughs> Does that include rumbas? 
<laughs> that's or right. Just do the carpet. Ooh, yeah, because that's housework. Uh, ooh. Yeah. By the way, um, I'm just going to take a break here and try and pat myself on the back a little here. Hey, go for it. So you know, um, last week, the day after the um, announcement on Kraft Unilever, which has now fallen by the wayside, uh, a lot of the uh, consumer and food stocks got pounded. Kellogg got pounded. We had to sell the calls that we had there uh, on the 50% down rule. Um, but what we also did was when it gapped to the downside $6, we also bought SJM, Smuckers. At 131.20, I believe it was Friday morning. Um, You're saying Smucker, way, Smucker's Jam yeah. is at 131 bucks, and it was down five and a half. Oh God! So it finished, <laughs> so it finished the day at um, 100 and 30. Five and change, still down on the day, but pretty close to the high of the day, and four and a half or four and a quarter higher than what we paid for it. With the deal falling apart and Kraft withdrawing, it's now trading 143.60 up 7.66. So we're up twelve dollars in the stock from Friday morning to today. Boy, you better pat yourself on the back. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and we couldn't and we couldn't buy the options because the options had no liquidity in them, and the only ones available were the ones that expired Friday, so those were worthless, and the ones that don't expire for a month, which had much too much premium and not enough liquidity in them to actually be purchased. I mean, they were like. The 135s were $2 bid offered at $4. So we don't get involved with that type of illiquidity. So we just had to buy the stock, which is exactly what we did. And so there's $12 in gain in that, or roughly 10% in six trading hours. Wow. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yep. Wow. Well, all of the food stocks got hammered on that because uh, it was such a big deal that any company that had any kind of takeover premium, because, you know, when the market gets this extended on the upside, you get a lot of these defensive companies that people really start looking at. And I don't mean just, you know, investors, people. I mean, companies that build companies start to take a look at them because they're so defensive and they don't expect things to, you know, be able to maintain. Wow. That's so pretty substantial. Yeah, I, I, I would say so. There's no doubt about it. Uh, uh, market watch. Smucker. Yep. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Uh, more on. Oh. Now, it's no, no, I was just going to say you know, the smuckers had come down from roughly 158. So, I don't see much reason to be a seller. I mean, I'm sure it's going to back and fill a little here, having been 130 and now having been 143. So I expect it to back and fill, but if it holds in here, I don't see any reason for it not to go back to 150, 155. Yeah, you did a great job with that. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Well, Michael, this is right up uh, your wheelhouse here. Uh, the uh, next leg in the oil bull market, according to Market Watch, is coming soon. And they're now predicting uh, $70 a barrel oil by December. Wow. Interesting. Well, you know, Greg, I also made mention in the... Uh in one of the daily notes in the evening one day last week that it looks like the momentum 
and the unbalanced volume in the actual commodity, the oil, looks like it's kind of crinked back to the upside. And um, it makes it look like what we were looking at before, which was one which was $50 on the bottom and 53 54 on the top, looks like it may be shifting a little to the upside to be, uh, you know, 53 to maybe 55 56 You know, it's just kind of becoming more stair-step. It's finding support at higher prices and is able to move higher. Uh, the news over the weekend was all about how, um, you know, the uh, Saudis, are selling the smallest little bit of uh, Aramco, which is the Saudi American oil. Yeah. Company. It's a huge IPO. And so they're making sure or they're leaning on everyone to not cheat on the cutback in drilling. And so they're getting a lot of support in that from everybody except Iran, um, and so, you know, it looks like there'll be less. I mean, there won't be any less here, but there'll be less there. We've already cut production here fairly substantially, but, you know, those, those um, the drillers and all the shale people, if it stays up here, you know, you can expect the spigot to turn on here. Wow. That's amazing. I, you know, you start thinking about that, especially the shale oil types up in uh, uh, North Dakota and, and South Dakota. You wonder if that's all uh, going to come back again. Well, you know, they, the fact that they closed them in because they weren't profitable is not. I mean, the last time we had uh, Connolly on, Tim Connolly on, yep. he was saying you know, they were more than profit. They were happy with $50 oil. So you can imagine at $54, they're just that much happier. And if they see it edging up, you know, they have no trouble taking it out of the ground profitably at those kind of prices. Yeah, but there again, how do you get it from point A to point B, though? I mean, is that uh, all part of our friend from Omaha and his uh, rail lines? Well, you know, They've kind of proven that that is not the safest way to transport oil. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, the current administration, you know, they're getting the uplift from the coal. And so their their traffic, their haulage of coal is picking up dramatically, you know, and we're exporting it, so that helps, the, you know, that helps our balance of payments. But... Um, you know they have all, they're also continuing to build all these pipelines so you know the North Dakota one absolutely the one from Canada absolutely I mean they put this stuff in the pipelines and get it to Cushing you know if there's a use for it let's remember that they changed the direction of the Cushing pipeline from south to north to north to south so all they have to do is get it on the boats so how large is this facility in Cushing, Oklahoma? I, I had never even heard of this town until this. Yeah. Um, you know, they talk about it in terms of, you know, hundreds of millions of barrels. Mike wouldn't know more about that. I mean, he's the one who's in the oil business. Yeah, speaking of oil, the commitment of traders report from the Commodity uh, Futures Exchange, from the Commodity uh, CFTC, Commodity Futures Trading Commission. The commitment of traders report shows the largest amount of longs, 525 million barrels of crude long versus just something like 44 million barrels short is the largest differentiation ever since the statistics were created. So there's a, everybody is long. Now, is that, is that, does it segregate commercials and speculators, Mike? It does, but... The report is illustrated in today's Wall Street Journal, the mm -hmm. Tuesday 21st copy. It's all there on page B10. And so I'm just pointing out that there is a huge long position, and that might uh, cause prices to stagnate at this level. 
54 to 55 yeah. may be high enough. Hmm. That's very interesting, guys. Right. Wow. You know, you, you have to wonder. Um, uh, there was also a, a piece in Market Watch that talked about uh, China's economy is um, – <laughs> Doing doing a little earthquake routine, you know, uh, just uh, wobbling back and forth, and that uh, President Trump may just add to the woes uh, because of everything that he's doing here, uh, uh, kind of loosening the environmental stuff for our oil and and a lot of other things going on here. So it's very very interesting, and you know, you just think, okay, and that directly affects the Chinese. Well, you know, it's small world, right? Yeah, but, you know, there, I read something the other day that was talking about how how much, I think it was a report by Nomura, and they were talking about how friendlier China is with some of its counterparts right there in Asia, and that's very powerful. I mean, that's, if, if they become an organized trading block, how good that would be for both sides of it. Kind of like China it. And for places like, like it, Vietnam and yeah. Philippines and, yeah. Kind of forming their own yeah, e- EU type thing? Kind of. I mean, except that they, you know, they're, they completely control it. The Chinese. Wow, you know this is not the, this is not going to be a dog wagging the, the tail wagging the dog. They are the big dog, and everybody else is just along for the ride. Mike, what are your well, feelings on that? There, are, you know, the other countries are growing very fast. I mean, the Philippines is growing between six and seven percent, and so yeah, in, Indonesia, the other countries are Malaysia. They're growing very fast. So yeah, the, I think you to, sent it. I, I think you sent me the number of report. I did. Yeah. Yes, and you can see in that report, there's almost no declines in GDP around the world. They're consistently going up all around the world, from one to three percent. That's a very positive report. That number of report, showing mm, yeah, continued robust growth. In, around the world. So the recession that a lot of people have looked for seems to be of put off, and the low volatility that we have in the markets is supportive. Mike, but uh, you look over on that side of the world, how transparent are any of those countries that you mention? Well, pretty transparent. I mean, it's hard to keep secrets these days. With, all, with the news media the way it is, I mean, really, there are so many economists, there are so many people traveling and who are doing business in these countries, it really it's hard to suppress information or to make up information. So I think we get a, a, a relatively true story, and you can see from the Nomura report the supportive documentation. Wow, that's Pretty amazing. Cool. That that is truly amazing, and uh, uh, we've got a worldwide economy. There's no doubt about it. Is this Robert joining us? Yes, I'm online. Aha, okay. Uh, So uh, we've just been talking about how uh, the Chinese economy is all of a sudden uh, um, just kind of waffling a little bit, but... uh, I know you do business all around the world there for Galaxy Gaming. Uh, what's going on with your company there, sir? Well, actually, the the, uh, the Asia market is not something that we've uh, chosen to penetrate yet, um, but uh, we're clearly strong in other parts of the world. I, I just came back from a, a month-long trip that um, – actually started with a, a, a company cruise in the Pacific so um, it was uh, it was a combination of work and, and pleasure but we put our whole company together to uh, work on our 2017 2018 strategic plan 
Uh, from there, I went down to uh, Africa for a couple of weeks uh, to, to work on our business opportunities there and then ended that trip in London. So um, this time of the year, uh, every year in London is the big show uh, that's called ICE, which is an acronym for International Casino Ex Exhibition. And uh, clearly, uh, the best show they've ever had, and for Galaxy Gaming, by far the best show that we've ever had in terms of, of writing business and, and uh, expanding our our presence throughout um, well throughout uh, Europe, the UK, uh, Middle East. So we have um, installations going in in a lot of new places uh, that I've never even been to, such as Malta and Cairo and, and all over. So. Uh, 